No, it's true. Yeah, I think yeah. the real difference between safety mm -hmm. and security is if you use it like the umbrella reference, where mm -hmm. the umbrella, the canopy, the part that's actually blocking the rain, that's security. Feeling safe mm -hmm. is how we feel underneath. Um, you know, mm -hmm. safety is is feeling warm and dry, but security is the overarching umbrella. And I think that a lot of times, um, you know, if you have a, a child who is, um, you know, you know, sleeping soundly in their own bed, they may be physically secure, but they're not going to feel safe if they think there's a monster hiding in the closet. And while a mother's love may make you feel safe, a mother's love alone is not enough to keep you protected from the hazards of the outside world. But so in order to feel safe, there has to be that that emotional and physical uh, that those two things need to be congruent. But security is ultimately about the safeguards that keep those risks from ever becoming a reality. And if those are in place and they are working as they are supposed to, and they are doing the job as we expect them to perform, only then can we truly feel safe. And so the difference ultimately between safety and security is the safeguards that are in place that we expect to work so that we can feel safe knowing that they are working. And the problem is, when there's a breakdown in the security, we have an overemphasis of anxiety because now we feel that our safety is threatened. So it's important to understand the difference between those two. You know, it puts me in mind of, if you remember uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits, the urgent important matrix. Yes. Where you had, where you can have a situation where you're safe and secure, a situation where you're neither of those things, a situation where you're secure and not safe, and a situation where you're safe but not secure. And each of those things requires a different solution yeah i mean think about just like in, in terms of being in uh in a car accident if you are safe in your car but then you go driving down the street and you get broadsided even though the next time you go out you're still just as safe as you were before you may not feel secure because you're everyone else isn't abiding by those same same rules of the road and so you really need to have the the congruence of the safeguards plus the emotional certainty in order for, for safety and security to be, uh, to be uh, working in Congress. No, that makes very good sense. It's, uh, I've never seen it uh, phrased just that way, but it's, it makes intuitive sense and then it gets backed up anytime you look in situations where things go wrong. It's often when you feel secure, and that may even be one of the thesis, main theses of the book, when you feel secure, but you're not actually safe. Well, that that is, really yeah, that, that is the the premise of the safety trap. Mm -hmm. It was the safety trap is a is a phrase that I coined a few years ago when trying to explain to my clients the uh, the false sense of security that comes when our fear has been abated but risk remains. 